physical computing with the breadboard. Introduction. Think of all of the pieces of technology that require a button. That is a ton of devices. Adding a button gives you the ability to create so many different projects. We will work with adding the button to our program and then connect it to the LED so you can make it turn on and off. Materials. Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus, micro USB power supply, HDMI cord, HDMI monitor, 8 gig micro SD card, mouse, keyboard, resistor, LEDs, bread cord, jumper wires, button. Key concepts. GPIO, time, sleep, button, LED. Using a button. About the breadboard. The breadboard is going to make the next project so much easier by holding all the components we will be using. Here's a look at what a breadboard looks like and how things are connected. The columns in the center are all connected and the rails on the outer parts of the breadboard are connected as well. Under each row and column are metal strips that act like wires to connect each hole to one another. The top and bottom have rails that are designed to make it easier to share power across the entire rail and to create a ground across the entire rail as well. They are usually marked with a plus or minus. Adding components to a breadboard is easy. You line up the metal parts, leads, of the component and place each one into the hole of the breadboard. We are going to set a button on the breadboard using jumper wires. First, we are going to set the button in place. We are going to place it on the breadboard across the center divide of the breadboard. You will need a male-female jumper wire. You will attach the female end to the GPIO2 pin and the male end will go to the hole right before the button lead. You will take a female male jumper wire and attach the female end to the ground pin on the pie. Take the male end and stick the pin into the far rail that is marked as a negative rail. Finally, take a male male jumper wire and connect one end to the ground rail and then take the other end and place it next to the other lead of the button. Use the image to help guide your wire placement. You are creating a circuit with the GPIO pin and ground with the button in the center. Let's write some code to use the button. Copy the following code in a new Thony file. We will start by pulling button from GPIO0 and then designate button to GPIO2. Next, we will tell the button to wait for press. Finally, we want something to happen when it's pressed, so we tell it to print. If everything is wired up correctly, the shell should print what you wrote when you press the button. Don't forget to run your program before you press the button. If it does not print, then your connections might be loose. Make sure everything is plugged into where it's supposed to be and try again. Add the LED. Take the LED circuit you created earlier and add it to the button circuit you assembled on the breadboard. You do not need to add it to the breadboard directly, but you can if you'd like. You need to tweak the code to make the button turn on the LED. Here is the new code. Notice that we added time and sleep at the top, connected LED to LED25, added LED.on and LED.off, and finally added the sleep command to cause it to blink. Add this code and run it. Push the button and watch it blink. Challenge. Can you use a forever loop to make the light continue to blink after you push it? Can you make the button turn the light on with one push and then off with another? Check the GPIO library for commands to help you solve these problems.